beauties, today I am so excited to share with you how I manifested my dream man, an interview with an amazing client of mine called Caroline. My name is Gio and I'm a relationship coach and the founder of the Embodied Feminine Woman Institute. And you know, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a woman go from hitting rock bottom to being more in love with her life than ever, more in love with herself than ever, being at the best time that she's ever been in her life with also with an amazing dream man by her side that she's totally in love with and he's absolutely crazy about her and treats her like the queen that she is. Before we continue, I'd love to invite you to join us if you haven't already at our free support group on Facebook called The High Value Woman, where we give daily guidance on how to help women feel their most empowered in themselves, reconnect to the power of their feminine energy, which is already inside of them, and attract dream love into their lives. So without further ado, here is Caroline's story. I'm so excited to share it with all of you. I really hope that you get encouragement and you realize that this can absolutely happen for you if this is a desire in your life that you're worthy of all of the fulfillment of your desires in this life and that you're worthy of living and being in the best time of your life possible absolutely in love with yourself and with an amazing best friend and passionate lover at your side doing life with you Care, I am so excited to have you with us today and share your amazing love story. To all the ladies listening, I just want to tell you how much I love Caroline. Caroline is one of the most special human beings I've ever met and one of the most beautiful women inside and out. And I've had the privilege of, of working with you, Care. And, you know, I was remembering today the first time you sat across from me you know with your beautiful hair and you know you were it was a skype call and i just saw this gorgeous woman and you just began sharing what you wanted for your life and i just kind of want to take you back there and ask you about where you were that person what made you reach out like how did you find me and, and our work <laughs> let's start there well Gia, thank you so much for saying those sweet things that means everything especially coming from you I look up to you so much Aww. as a big sister and as a mentor and um as as a spiritual leader and healer I think Thank you. <laughs> and you were exactly what I needed at the time that I found you it had gotten pretty low I would mm -hmm. say um I had been single for about five years after a very serious relationship ended and um he had ended things with me and so I internalized it all and really my self-esteem was shot and I went to a really low place. I started drinking, I started partying, I started dating younger men. I even dated a bouncer of a club who treated me like shit, if I can say that. <laughs> yeah, oh, you can, you can go for it. <laughs> go for it. Let's get, this is going to be a real talk, ladies. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I remember my lowest point was um, and this is TMI, this is being real, real right about now. I went to the club um, to hang out with him, and he couldn't give me the time of day. So he came over after his shift had ended and um, broke things off with me. And I remember that was the lowest point of my life because here I am, young, I'm in my 20s still, I'm an attorney, I'm successful, I work in a big law firm, and I'm dating a bouncer of a club who just dumped me. Yeah, oh and yeah, so how did that feel? It felt horrible, and the way I responded to it was I begged him to have me back. I literally remember that weekend I called crying and begging for him to come over and to give me another chance. And what had your previous boyfriend been like? My previous boyfriend was an attorney. We met in law school. He was super successful, came from a well-to-do family in Chicago. Um, we, had a, we had a good relationship. What ultimately ended up pushing him away was the neediness. He mm -hmm. said that, that he couldn't fix me anymore. Mm. And so, um, so I pushed this amazing man away and he moved back to Chicago and got engaged and I was left with the pound service club begging him to take me back. Oh my gosh, my, my heart so goes out to you, Care, because um, how many women have, 
you know, left a relationship and not quite felt grounded um, in their own healing and in their own heart and gone off to, to try and numb that pain or gone off to, you know, lost hope and love and then tried, you know, attracted men that just aren't worthy of them, right? So, yeah. so how did you end up on a call with me? It's just, <laughs> it's just amazing how the world works. <laughs> It is. And, and thank God I had some angels or someone looking over me that said, all right, enough is enough. Um, I had a girlfriend who was very into personal development work and she had found you. And, you know, I was at the lowest of the low. I was depressed. I was numbing. I was partying. I was looking for validation on social media. I was posting pictures with my boobs out and like big hair and red lipstick. And, mm -hmm. Any way I could get validation that wasn't true validation, I was going for. Mm -hmm. And so my girlfriend kind of stepped in and said, hey, you know, this personal development journey has really helped me. Maybe you should look into it. And so she sent me her website wow. and right away I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, this is exactly what I need. And this woman is, mm -hmm. is teaching something that I haven't seen anywhere else, you know, because I should mention also at the time I was really reading these, I was reading the book, Why Men Love Bitches and Why Men Marry Bitches because I just wanted a relationship mm -hmm. because that would validate me. And how did that stuff work for you? Like, what, what did you see that was different in our message? So the stuff kind of worked. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting more dates, but the dates were dry, artificial. They ended in sex. They ended with them not calling, returning calls. They ended with partying, drinking. And I was just left feeling really unfulfilled. And so when I saw your message and when I, when I read about the feminine essence and this core, I think my soul had been stifled for so long. And just reading two or three sentences of your teaching, something deep inside of me was like, this is it. I'm here. Hi, oh, this wow. is your soul. Oh, let, wow. me, let me have a chance to come out and show the world what, who you truly are. Wow, what a privilege. What a privilege. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And um, so now you're in an amazing relationship. So let's talk a little bit about that relationship and then we'll take you back and we'll kind of go a little bit step by step on your journey and what you went through and, and how um, you reclaimed your full power, your high value, your confidence, your radiance. And, you know, because now you are in an amazing, amazing place in your life. So tell us a little bit about your man now, like how, how he treats you, how he loves on you, what kind of relationship you have. Just tell us a little bit about that. I know. I'm going to get emotional talking Go about it. it. It's <laughs> Go so it. Oh, incredible. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's actually funny how we met too, because we met on Tinder, mm -hmm. which is traditionally a hookup site. And our relationship could not be more deep, meaningful, loving, passionate, soulful, connected, respected. I didn't, I didn't think that that this kind of relationship was possible, to be honest. I mean, especially starting at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, right? Like, what about it is it that you thought at some point in your life prior to this that it wasn't possible? Maybe to feel as safe as you do? Because how safe and secure do you feel in this relationship? Oh, my gosh. I mean, not only emotionally safe, but physically safe. Like, he, he, I he made it very clear that I brought out something in him that wants me, that wants him to protect me physically, emotionally, spiritually, in, in every sense, way, imagination that he can protect me. He wants to do that. Well, that's his masculinity, right? That's his masculine energy. And that's because you were in such an incredible embodied feminine place within yourself. That's so beautiful. Okay, so let's go back to your journey, and then we're going to kind of dive deep into your relationship and, and just kind of go there. So tell us a little bit, uh, Care, about what your journey healing your soul was like through this um, process, and why healing, healing your heart and reclaiming your femininity was the foundation that would set you up for the relationship you're in now. 
Well, I remember when we started Geo, I think it might have been our first or second session. Um, you talked about the importance of the inner healing and basically said, you know, a relationship is going to be a byproduct of this healing. I don't even recognize my life a year ago. I mean, I, I can't, I can't even explain how different it is because yeah. of our work together. I mean, it's yeah. 100- percent been because of our work together and you know those first few sessions were really tough it was so freeing Mm -hmm. and healing and worth it yeah right yeah because what would it feel to your soul every time you would kind of dig deep give it space let it heal bring up the stuff that needed to heal and really release it like what did that feel to your soul and what would that start to do for your confidence and self-esteem naturally without you even trying it was, it was, it felt like divine intervention in a way, like you were the catalyst to that divine intervention because, you know, we all have these souls and these hearts and we shut them out so much. And so with each of our, with each of our sessions, I would see a little bit more of my heart, a little bit more of my soul. And the second that we started giving space to it, it just felt so connected and spiritual and freeing. Mm-hmm because I could start to see who I really was. And it was the first time in 32 years I had ever, or, you know, 31 years that I had ever seen that. And how did that feel? And it felt so incredibly freeing that I was able to start to emerge as the person that I was put on this planet to be. Yeah, that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Tell us how you went from, you know, single for five years, no luck. Tell us from day one on Tinder how, uh, you know, Brendan was different and and how, um, you know, you started this amazing relationship. Yeah. So first of all, when I was on Tinder and I met Brendan, I was in a really, really good place. When I met him, I felt for the first time in my life personally, I had a voice. I had confidence. I was on a track of pursuing my passion and my career and changing fields and getting into international human rights law. And that was all because of you as well, um, tapping into my soul and really hearing it. But, but I had been on Tinder for five years and I had never had the response that I had from men at that point. And, you know, if it wasn't Brendan, I was dating a few guys at the same time and all of the men I met online and, you know, Brendan, ultimately we became official and committed. But at the time when I first met him, the other men were taking me out to, to the nicest steak restaurant and just treating me like absolute queens from yeah. Tinder. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the change. That's when you start. Yeah. Huge change. So you were yeah. having all these men passionately pursuing you that weren't pursuing you before. And all of a sudden the quality of the men was a significant jump up and they were treating you out to, I remember you told me like, Oh my gosh, he's taking me out to the steakhouse and he's treating me like a queen and like all this stuff. Right. Yes. It was. And it just, it just so confirms everything you say about energy because I had been on Tinder for four years and I had gotten the sleaze balls and the creepy messages and, you know, the hookups and, but really following your, your advice in terms of my pictures and my dating profile. And then in combination of the healing work that we did together, all of a sudden it was like all that work came together and the men were just stepping up and they weren't even bringing up sex the first, second, third, you know, even fourth date. It was just restaurant after restaurant after gift. And well, well, the, well, the thing is, and I just get chills talking about this because Every single of my clients tells me the same thing. They, they're they so respectful and they see my value and they see my radiance. And that's because you are embodying a super high value woman. And so my clients tell me this. They're like, Jill, he hasn't even broached sex. And that's because when you're high value, you're, the space that you provide for men is so valuable that they'll do anything to be around it and, and present the best of themselves as opposed to you know just getting whatever they can, right? It's so true. It's so true. And, and, you know, hearing that and thinking about it before doing the work, I maybe would have been hesitant or like, is that really going to happen to me? But I mean, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone for sure. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yes. And so how did it feel to all of a sudden go from like a sleaze or creepy approaching behavior from men on Tinder and all of a sudden be asked out by all these guys and pursued? How did that start to feel to you? 
Oh, it felt amazing. It felt like I was finally stepping into this place of work and this place that I knew was inside of me, but I just never operated from that place my entire life. So it started feeling so honoring and it started feeling so valued. And, you know, something else I should mention with these dates that I had to get over was, you know, I was kind of under the impression that well, I need to make it equal. Like I would feel guilty when guys did things for me. Mm-hmm. So if a guy took me out to dinner, I'd feel bad and offer to pay for the tip or, mm-hmm. you know, offer to, to pay for something. And that was something I really, really got over through your help. And so I just worked on receiving mm-hmm. and the benefits and the, the gifts and the attention, the genuine attention that came from receiving felt amazing it felt Mm -hmm. so good to just take a back seat let him take care of the check let him pay for it let him drive me let him take me on trips and never have to bring up contributing financially or making it equal I just really focused on being present and receiving and the more I did that the more excited he got the more he wanted to do more for me the more they wanted to to bring me more gifts and it was just it was it was like a light bulb moment it, well, it's huge, right? And ladies, when you embody that feminine energy and you embody your authentic heart, like Kara's talking about, it is so valuable to men and so rare that they'll do anything. They'll want to treat it with the, with the most precious care and, and really step up to provide and protect for that. Kara, how different does it feel to have shown up and done this work from the inside out, from authentic place within you versus trying to follow a book and a bunch of rules and a formula? Like, what's the difference there for you? It feels so good, Jill. Like the work that we did together and your teachings are priceless. And I wanna wanna really, really get that point across priceless because it is literally setting me up for the rest of my life. It's setting me up for my life professionally, personally, with relationships with my family, relationships with my friends, or personal relationships, my career, my social media. I mean, in every aspect of my life, I'm now operating from a place of who I'm meant to be and who my heart is. And I'm able to show my heart. And before I worked together, I wasn't operating in that place at all. I was operating from a place of neediness, loneliness, validation. And so, I mean, not only has our work together affected um, my my relationships with men, it's affected my entire life. Yeah, yeah. And and Kara decided through our work to pursue international human rights law, and she is incredible at it. I mean, incredible. You were recently, I mean, we're not going to get into it because obviously private, but you were recently in the news about it. And really, like, you're just getting started on the amazing work that you are going to be doing on this planet care and the lives that you're going to be impacting. And I I can't even imagine. So let's talk about the life that you impacted in your man (laughs) because you (laughs) had such an impact on him that he's just can't get over you. So we're going to talk about when you first met him. But one thing that I think is so endearing is that care started dating her man. And he, at the beginning said to her, you know, something along the lines of like, marriage is not for me. Like, uh, he was very shut off of the idea of, uh, having a committed relationship. He, so you could, you could have said that he was uh, non-committal in his stance. And the amazing, th- the thing about men, ladies, is that number one, I always teach about the type of emotional safety that they're really needing from a high value woman. And if you haven't joined our institute at the embodied feminine woman.com, make sure to join our year long program because it's off the charts. Amazing. Uh, if I do say so myself, uh, <laughs> we really cover so many things there. But the, the thing about it is that he, he like so many men were looking for a type of emotional safety and femininity and feminine energy in a woman that he needed to really open his heart. And so care showed, showed up consistently like that confident, elegant, beautiful, uh, open hearted feminine woman. And what started to happen, Carrie, tell us, tell us from the moment you first met him, kind of walk us through that journey. Well, a little bit of a backstory on him, and you hit the nail on the head, Gio, is this isn't a man that, you know, operates from a place of insecurity or jumps into relationships or makes impulsive decisions. This is, that's not the kind of man he is at all. This man is, he's a Marine, he's beautiful, he's about 6'2", and everyone says he looks like a Ken doll. <laughs> I love that. 
and he's he's a protector. He's strong. He's in the Marines, and he's done several deployments overseas, and he has a very strong leadership role in the government and the military. And so he was in that place when we first met. He had come off a bad rela- series of bad relationships, and he just kind of said, you know what, maybe your relationships aren't for me. I'm going to stick to my profession, and I know I can protect in that way, and I live my life like that. And so when we first met, um, we actually connected first online on Tinder, like I said, when I was at a bachelorette party in California. And I was, um, our hotel was close to the Marine base. And so that's how we connected. And so we started talking on, um, we started texting. And then right away, after maybe a few texts, he said, I'd love to call you and talk more. You're so intriguing and beautiful. And I love your pictures. There's so much personality in these pictures. And Mm -hmm. you had helped me pick my pictures for, um, for my online dating accounts. And so So we started talking on the phone because I went back to Arizona and he had actually just gotten back from a deployment. Um, So he had to wrap up some things in Kentucky where he's from originally after his deployment. So we talked on the phone. He called. I never had to ask him to call, say, hey, let's talk on the phone. Every day he would call. He would text, check in. He said, when I get back to California, I'm going to drive down to Phoenix and take you on a date. You're just amazing. And the more I talk Mm. to you, I'm so drawn to you. And you're so deep. And, um, you know, this is a man that has experienced a lot of things overseas. And so he was looking for a woman, a woman with depth. Oh, and I, can I just pause you for one second? The beautiful thing here is that when you and I began our work together, you were like, Geo, I want a Marine. Like my dream is to have a, a, a man in the military, a Marine, like this is the type of man. And the men you had dated were of that, you know, of that background. It was so interesting to me because one of the things that I find continuously with clients is they'll say things to me. Like I had another client who's engaged to an amazing man now. And she was like, she described him physically. I want him to have thick eyebrows and be like this. And I want him to have this type of career. And that's exactly what she got. Right. And so that's the amazing thing. And so for you, you have such a passion for human rights and, and uh, your own experience with men who of service that this is what you wanted on so many levels. Right. It yeah. is. It is. I was craving the depth as well. I felt drawn to men with military background because we were able to share a depth that I wasn't able to share with a lot of other men. I love that. I love that. So he got back to California and man of his word followed through. He drove five hours to take me out to dinner and, you know, was a perfect gentleman said, Hey, look, I'm driving down here to take you out. That's all I want to do. And I just can't wait to meet you and see you in person. And so we clicked right away and he took me out to dinner and we had an amazing time. And, um, you know, I just, I showed up in a much different place than I ever have in my whole life because I wasn't needing validation from him. I wasn't needing to attach to him. I, I kind of figured, you know, if it works out with him, great. If not, that's fine. I have a lot of other options. Yes. Oh, boom. That is the high value empowered state. Perfect. Yeah. That, and that's the state that's irresistible right there. And Mm -hmm. so what happened after that? So, and, and I think you're really, really onto something there too, because in the past I would have attached right away. If we mm-hmm. had a great date, he drove down, he's making all this effort. Like I would start imagining my future with him. Like, what mm. if this is the one? And what if this is a guy? And, and I didn't do any of that. Which and is huge. It's huge because that's the rite of passage between dating like a, a wounded little girl that's looking for that validation and that security and attachment or having really transformed yourself as I am so high value that I don't need to do this. You know, I I don't have a need to do this. I know that the right man is going to pursue me and that this is going to work out organically because I am so valuable. I'm so worthy, right? I've got amazing self-worth. Okay, so what happened after that? So um, so after that, I mean, another one of your teachings is, you know, there was there's a ton of physical chemistry as well between us. And so we did end up being intimate that same night and it was also from such a different place it would it happened go. organically it happened naturally it happened after really really deep intimate conversations and again it was it was it happened from a place of 
I'm not wanting you to like me through sleeping with you or, or yeah. I'm not seeking your validation through, through sleeping with you. It just Jeez. kind of happened. And so I think, I think the energy was so different because we talk about it now and we joke about it now. And, and he said, you know, it's interesting with any other girl sleeping on the first date, it would have, I think it would have ended differently. He's like, but there was just something about you and your energy and our connection. He's like, it actually drew me closer to you Zoom, and yeah. made, made yeah. you wanted to, pers- made me want to pursue you even more. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So after that, I mean, nothing, he pursued me even more. He started driving down every single weekend. He had to work on base in California from Monday through Friday. And then the second he got off on Friday, he'd drive down. And and within a, maybe a month of us dating, he, he brought it up in the most beautiful way, Gio. He said, I'll never forget, we were at a coffee shop. And he said, you know, no pressure, but you're amazing. You're, you're what I want. And I want to show you commitment. I wow. want I want you to feel my commitment. And he's like, if this is too soon or if this is something that, you know, you're not ready to be exclusive quite yet, then I'm willing to wait for you. He's like, wow. but I want to do something to show you how committed I am to you. Well, how huge is the fact that, do you see the, the, the energetic power dynamic there, that it's not like a woman waiting on the edge of her seat for a man to commit to her. It was like, he had enormous respect for you. You know? I had no idea it was coming. I mean, it, it, it just flowed. It just happened. And he said it had been on his mind. I didn't have to control. I didn't have to ask. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to fight. It just, it literally could not have happened more seamlessly. And, and remember, this is someone who for five years tried to control and beg and fight and, yeah. you know, analyze every single text and read the rules and respond to every text according to the rules. And, and I'd given all that up through our work and, and it was, it could not have been easier. Right. Oh, I just think that's so amazing. I'm so excited. Ladies, let's celebrate this (laughs) beautiful goddess. I love it. I love it. Wow. Wow. Because that's real transformation. That's when the, the ease and flow has entered your soul and your heart and your body. And you're really embodying a woman of high self esteem with a lot to offer a man. And so, um, so you guys became exclusive and, and kind of how did the relationship progress then after that? Well, it was interesting because shortly after uh, we became committed and, and I, full disclosure, during this conversation where he asked me to be exclusive, I said, you know, I was at that point too, so I wanted to commit to him, but I had just applied to a program in D.C. for international human rights, and so... Yeah, because you were got, following your soul, right? Because we had determined that's what your soul wanted to do through our work, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. It was it was my passion, and so, um, so in that same conversation, he knew I had just applied, and I said, you know, I'm I'm waiting to hear back from this program. And if I get in, I'm going to be in Cal or I'm going to be in Washington, DC. And, and he said, I don't care. I don't care. He said, I'm going to support you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so inspired by you that I will do whatever it takes to make this work and to be there for you to, and to help you pursue that passion. Exactly. As well. And you know, this is so powerful care because a lot of women um, get into a rut with the man that they're with and he's not paying attention to them and he's not doing things for them and they get, and I can understand it, right? But they take it as a personal rejection and then they start nagging or they start, why aren't you paying attention? Whereas if you're in your centered high value feminine state, um, a man gets so much value from it that he steps up and wants to do more and more and more. Granted, this being a quality man, right? But once you upgrade your um, degree of high value femininity by, you know, healing yourself, men step up because they love the energy. They can't get enough of it. So he's like, you know, this is so valuable to me. And this is so rare that I will do whatever it takes to keep it. I will step up. I will do whatever, you know, and you're just going and flowing along like a goddess following your path. Right. And it's interesting too. And I should add just as a realistic, um, pointer is that you know I'm only human and so there were times in my relationship where I would notice that I would kind of slip back Mm -hmm. um not regress necessarily but I would be in a conversation with him and my energy would be a little bit masculine Mm -hmm. or you know I try to push him for an answer And, and this happens super rare I mean especially with all of our work togethers I mean 
only a couple of times throughout the course of our relationship, but what's but that's interesting, normal. It's super normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And what's interesting is now I have, I know how to kind of identify it and look inward and, and see what's going on and kind of have that self talk mm-hmm. of, okay, Caroline, you know, you've slipped in your masculine a bit and I can see him shutting down. I, I remember very specifically we we're at a restaurant and I wanted him to open up and get deep on it, on something that um, he normally does just freely. He'll mm-hmm. just come and talk about freely. And so I started asking him really specific questions and I could tell he started getting a little bit shut down. And so inter- I went internally and I said, okay, you know, you're slipping into your masculine a little bit. Let's just take a breather. Let's check in. Let's kind of see what's going on internally. And so I shifted that focus and I ended up signing up for a conference that weekend mm-hmm. and just really digging back into something that I was interested in. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, the second I, first morning I was at the conference, I start getting texts. I miss you, babe. Yeah, of Where course. I love out? it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When our energy starts to get too focused on, on them, they experience it as control and it shuts them down. And then we pull that energy back onto giving to ourselves and all of a sudden, you know, it comes flowing right back. Yeah. I love that. That's a foundational principle in life. And it's something that I wish we were all taught when we were young but we definitely teach it in our course for sure. Yeah. And so you told me at some point that this was the easiest relationship you'd ever had and that you guys actually never fight ever. No, never. <laughs> Tell me about that. Never. I mean, <laughs> um, it, it's hard to put into words because it's almost unbelievable. It's hard for me to even believe. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the volatile nature of a lot of my past relationships, um, I've never had a relationship where we haven't fought. All of my past relationships have been very emotional and, you know, volatile and um, screaming matches. And, and looking back, you know, a lot of that was because I was coming from a place of neediness and control. But, but we have so much passion. Um, naturally our souls connect on such a deep level that that passion is genuine passion. That passion isn't artificially created from a, from a super intense fight, you know? Oh my gosh. That's that's profound. What you just, ladies, Carol, Caroline is bringing it. Yes. (laughs) Right. But isn't that, that's just so it's exactly it. It's real passion. Um, so what are some of the things that he's told you around that? Cause I remember he said things like, man, you, you're so different from other women. What were the things that he would point out about that? Oh yeah. I mean, still to this day, I wake up from a text. I mean, I'll read you a text he sent me this morning. Mm-hmm. I wake up every single day with a sweet text from him <laughs> and, um, you know, this is going on while into our relationship and he's just he he even made a he makes comments about my energy all the time like I was really happy this weekend and he texted me and he said I love I love when you're happy and you have that energy it's so calming to me I just want to cuddle you up and hold you in my arms and mm. you know he doesn't know about feminine and I don't <laughs> talk to him about this so his his response is is genuine and um you know like just this morning I woke up to this text. I love you. I keep waking up and falling asleep. So I figured I'd tell the girl who means the most to me that I love her every day. And every second of these days, I have the greatest gift, which is a partner who is caring, sweet, supportive, and a stone cold fox. I love you, Caroline, from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And how does it feel to get those texts? It feels amazing. And and I tell him how it feels waking up to that and reading that from such a strong man. I I let the emotions flow and I tell him, I tell him how that feels down to every cell of my body, like how I can feel it in every cell of my body and how, how much it means to me. And, and I just completely receive it, completely receive it. And I think because I do, he continues to act that way. Absolutely, because um, that's sensuality. You know, that's that's a, a part of sensuality, which is when he has an impact on your body and soul and your emotional world, when he's given and provided something, you tell him that impact and you mirror that back to him and you tell him how your senses were impacted. And so that transfers to him 
the gift of actually feeling it with you and feeling that he has succeeded and he has delivered and, and that makes a man feel like a man, right? So I remember you telling me something along the lines of how you never flew, flew off the handle and you were very emotionally safe. Can you remind me what he said about that? So that is another thing that has changed dramatically. In the past, I would fly off the handle so easily. I mean, mm-hmm. I had a mother that was very emotionally unstable mm-hmm. and, you know, grew up with that. I still deal with that. And if you say hello the wrong way, then it's the end of the world. And so, so I kind of adopted that in relationships. And, you know, if a guy was checking out another girl, I'd fly off the handle. If he didn't text me back, I would fly off the handle. And, um, and, and through our work together, we've, we've shed that layer. That's not me. That's not who I am at my core. That was my ego. That was my shadow. That was, you know, my wounds. And so after shedding that part of me, I realized my essence is actually very calming and mm-hmm. respectful yeah. and um, logical and, and emotional, mm-hmm. but, um, but in a very safe way. Mm-hmm. And so once I learned how to communicate from that place through UGO, then I was able to communicate to him that way. Mm-hmm. 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 Powerful. So, so I've never once flown off the handle with him. I've never, and I think a part of that is he's created such a safe place for us. He doesn't mm-hmm. give me a reason. Yeah. Um, but a huge part of that as well, because at the end of the day, he is a man and he's not perfect either, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but the few issues that have come up in our relationship, we've been able to come together as a team and talk about in such a respectful, caring, understanding way. So, you know, of course things have come up in our relationship, but, but the way that we talk them through is such a beautiful conversation. It's like the way we're talking right now, Mm. that there's such resolution. And so he feels as though he can be completely honest with me at all times, no matter what it is. Which is huge for a man huge for a man um that he feels that he can be himself because that's a deep sense of self-acceptance and emotional freedom for a man um that's amazing and you remember he said something about it right didn't he say something about that or am i am i misremembering because i have tons of clients and i'm managing so many boos and boyfriends (laughs) (laughs) he said something along the lines of he has to remind himself that I'm a female because he feels so safe yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, 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 I love that. So um, how do you feel his passion for you, Care? How do you feel that he's really in love with you? How do you see it? How do you know it? How do you feel it? That he's his attraction for you, his commitment to you. How do you feel it? Oh, wow. That's an amazing question. I feel it every, every day and I feel it every second we're talking and communicating and, um, I feel his love and devotion. I feel, I feel his support, which Mm -hmm. is the best. For example, I, this is a perfect example. So I'm, I'm taking my program so seriously and I have a review session for one of my um, classes the day I was supposed to leave to come home for Thanksgiving. And so I called him and I told him about it and I said, I don't know what to do. So he took it upon himself to change my flight. So I was able to make it to my review session because he knew how much that meant to me. Um, And it's just, it's moments like that that I feel so loved and adored and respected. And the fact that, you know, that means I'm not going to see him for one more day, Mm. but he knew how much this program meant to me and supported me through it financially and, you know, took it upon himself to make the changes. And that just meant so much to me. Yeah. Wow. You can really feel it in your heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. How much that meant to you. (laughs) I I can feel it. You know, he recently asked, uh, he's talked to you about moving in and taking care of you and being your man. So he's wanting to move the relationship forward into moving in together. He's also spoken of the kids he wants to have with you. So how does it feel 
to know he's already moving all of this to the next stage and consistently pushing the relationship forward after almost a year together. I think that it feels so good because we're dealing with a high value man. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dealing with a man who wants to step up and who's not a playboy and who's, you know, who was really thoughtful with his commitment and who didn't want to commit, Mm. you know, when I first met him. So I think the fact that I've seen this shift in him really is a testament to the work that we've done together and how I present myself to him. Mm -hmm. Because this isn't a desperate man that just wants a partner to get married, to get married and be in a relationship. I mean, this is a man that really was, was struggling with whether he even wanted to mm-hmm. be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, so the fact that he's the one moving it forward is something I never thought I would see. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're seating at my kitchen table begging the bouncer to come to take me back. Definitely have come a long way. But it feels amazing. And again, like I can't stress enough that I didn't have to do anything to mm-hmm. get him to this point. Mm-hmm. But, but follow your teachings and continue our work together, continue inner healing and pursue my passions. I mean, no controlling, no, no bringing it up, no nagging, no begging, nothing. He's the one that has stepped up that wants to take this to the next level. And that feeling is amazing. It's amazing, right? And how did, good did it feel when he was like, I want us to move in together and I want to pay for everything. I want to take care of you. I want to, I want to take care of rent, you know, food, everything. I want to be your man. Like, how did that feel when he said that? It felt like he was taking a leadership role. And I tell him this, you know, because, because keep in mind, like I'm a very successful woman on my own. I could easily have the mentality that I'm going to take care of myself financially. I can, you know, like, I'm a career woman and I make a lot of money and, and that's all true, but he doesn't, he doesn't see it that way. You know, Mm -hmm. he sees it as I want to be the leader in this. I want to take care of you. And I love that you make your own money and have your own career and have your own passion. But at the end of the day, I'm the, I'm the leader here and I'm, I'm going to step up and take care of you. Oh my gosh. Can you feel that? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? That's so heart touching. So would you say care that you feel at peace, safe, secured, adored with a man that's handsome, a leader, masculine, who's devoted to you? Would you, would you say that you're Uh, there? A hundred percent. I was just thinking about that today, actually this morning, you know, thinking about the days when I'd have my phone glued to me and um, waiting for a text and then getting a text and texting my girlfriends and saying, is this okay to send? What should I send back? Should I ask him out? Should I ask him to meet me for coffee? I mean, those days are long gone. Long (laughs) Long gone, right? (laughs) Long gone. And I was thinking about that this morning and just thinking how I wake up every morning to a text and calls and and love and never having to question his devotion, never having to question his trust, just feels so completely secure. I've never felt so secure in my life, even with my own family. I, I mean, he's 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 become a huge rock for me and there you have it ladies i hope you enjoyed how i manifested my dream man and that you absolutely got something valuable out of hearing caroline's powerful story of reconnecting to her love for herself to her passion and purpose in life and of course to attracting that amazing man that protects her adores her is devoted to her and and in which they had that amazing relationship so here are three ways in which we would absolutely love to help you first off if you haven't joined our amazing free support group online the high value woman All you have to do is go on Facebook, type in the Google search box, The High Value Woman, and you're going to see it. Please feel free to join. You're going to absolutely love it. We offer daily guidance and uh, amazing community support. If you would also like to access my free class called Three Secrets of Highly Desirable Women, you can find it in this link right here. Just go ahead and copy paste that link 
um, you know, and go straight to the class, sign up. We have women absolutely raving about this class. You're going to absolutely love it. And if this message today deeply resonated with you, if you know in your heart that you're tired of being single and spending weekends alone and going to bed, just not knowing if this love thing is really for you, it's really in the cards for you. You know, if you're tired of attracting men that you just aren't into and you keep hitting those walls in love, we want to offer you powerful support. We have the best strategy and path laid out to help a woman go from single to attracting that, that real fulfillment in her life and that dream relationship fast. So you can go to this link here and just book yourself in for our love and relationship discovery call. Now, this call is valued regularly at $297, but it is free. You get to speak with one of our master coaches for, for free. You get to tell them where you're at in love and receive invaluable insights. And if you are a fit um, for our program, we're going to invite you to work one-on-one -on -one with us so that you can, like Carolyn, make your dreams of love come true. You deserve nothing less. And this call is absolutely free, you know, so I really suggest that you make use of it while it's still available. So go to this link here and make sure to book in your session. We book up really fast. So, you know, claim that spot for yourself and I hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful day. It was great connecting with you today and I wish you the absolute best in the fulfillment that you deserve in your life, both in your love relationships and in life itself. Sending you all so much love. Bye-bye.